Hey guys, it's Leah from Stump Bumps. This video is about building a stump bike from the ground up. If you have a stock street bike and you're thinking about making the transfer into the world of stunt riding, hopefully this video will give you an idea of what the process is like to build the bike and what stunt parts you need to keep your motorcycle in one piece through learning some stunts. We're going to be talking about my 2012 stunt bike and the stunt parts on it, how they held up through the year for me. I'm just going to go over all the parts, let you know what they did for me specifically and how I liked them. I started with the Bone Stock 2004 Kawasaki ZX6R or 636. People love this bike for stunt riding because the motor feels great, it pulls strong when you're stunting, but also if you accidentally flip it down the parking lot or drop it on its side, it's going to hold up pretty good. Also, another great thing is since it's so popular in the stunt world, all the stunt companies make parts for this bike. And that's a big problem when you're thinking about getting into stunt riding. If you have a bike that's an odd year, maybe an older model, or just a bike that isn't stunted a lot, stunt parts might be hard to find for it. So that's something to think about. So the first thing I did was strip the bike down and powder coat the frame, subframe, swing arm, and wheels. It's always nice when you get a new bike to strip it down, go over every part, make sure you build it up to your standards so you feel confident in your bike when you hit the lot. Also for 2012, I decided to go full fairing, which I was a little bit nervous about because if your fairings get cracked or messed up, normally a full fairing bike that's falling apart ends up looking worse than just a street fighter bike. I ended up ordering a set of aftermarket fairings from NiceCycle.com. I ended up being really impressed with my fairings. They mounted up good and they've held up to multiple crashes all season long. Since I was running full fairing, I also needed a fairing stay. The fairing stay is crucial if you're running full fairings, especially if you're running headlights. The impact from coming down from wheelies time after time after time eventually is going to crack your upper and bust your headlights. It's just not worth it. So definitely get a fairing stay if you're planning on running full fairing. I went with a stealth stay. I really love the design and how they integrate the windshield into the stay so everything just looks nice and clean on my front end. Now into crash protection. I'm running an impact tech cage, sub cage, and round bar this year. They've definitely been great for me this year through all my crashes. One of the best things about the cage is that it mounts up really easy. The parts fit perfect, which made installation a breeze for me. I'm running Stunner X rear sets this year. I love the design. They're just super simple looking, strong, and they do the job great. I also have the foldable fatty pegs on them, which I love. Um, they don't dig into your foot when you're doing wheelies and they feel great, nice and sturdy. You can also get those at StunnerX.com. Now onto my handbrake setup, which is a little bit different than what I've run in the past and I ended up really liking it. It's a big rotor dual caliper setup from StunnerX. I'm running two four piston calipers that are mounted here to the bracket and the rotor is off a of ZX14. The bigger rotor ends up giving your handbrake a little bit more strength. Um, which relieves a lot of the pressure when you're doing wheelies. My hand gets tired really quickly, especially when you're going back and forth between the clutch and your handbrake. So the extra strength has been awesome for me on just taking the pressure off of my hand. So for my handbrake master cylinder, I'm running a Brembo left-sided master cylinder. Um, I've always run a right-sided one flipped upside down, but the fit just isn't quite right under the clutch lever and it never ended up feeling perfect on my hand. With the left-sided master, it definitely everything fits up nice and tight and you can tell a big difference. This year I decided to go with 7 degree Vortex clip-ons. Last year I was running 0 degree clip-ons and I definitely feel that the 7 degree are a little bit easier on my hands and also just feel a little bit better for leverage. For my radiator, I'm running the damage control radiator cage again. This year I have the dual fan set up so I can run two fans on it, which is really necessary if you're training in a hot place like Southern California. So that's my stunt bike for 2012. If you're just getting into stunt riding, don't think that you need to have a bike like this. Just get yourself a crash cage and an easy pull clutch, maybe a 12 o'clock bar if you want to keep your tail in one piece and just go hit the lot, see if it's for you. And then if you decide stunt riding is for you, you can always keep adding to your stunt bike. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what goes into building a stunt bike. If you're thinking about getting into stunt riding, check out stuntbumps.com. We have a ton of tutorials and how-to articles that should get you started and help you learn safely.
If you enjoyed the video, be sure to say something in the comment section below and enjoy the ride.